Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. So welcome back. Today I want to give you an introduction of shields for Arduino boards. So if you want to go out and you want to use an Arduino board for a project, one of the first things that you need to do is figure out the appropriate Arduino board for what you're doing. So you may want to go with an Arduino Uno board. This is a basic Arduino board. You may want to go with a nano board. So that's one of the really small boards. You may want to go with a mega board, one of the large boards. You may want to go with an Arduino Uno with Wi-Fi. That actually has has Wi-Fi built into the Arduino board. But one of the questions that's gonna come up is, but, but what if I need functionality out of my Arduino board and there are no Arduino boards out there that are built with that functionality on the single board? Where, well, one of the things that you can do is you can use shields. So what a shield is, is basically it's kind of like it's an add-on board essentially for Arduino boards, and this gives you additional functionality. Think of, think of something like a PCI uh, card on a PC. That's more or less what a shield is in the Arduino world. So basically you have your board, you put the shield on top, and then you're able to access additional functionality. So this is a NIC. This is a network uh, Arduino shield. So this allows you to plug in an RJ45 jack and actually have your Arduino be able to connect to an Ethernet TCP IP4 uh, network. So if you want a sensor that you can access over a normal wired network, you could add this, uh, the, this network shield. If you're going to be doing something, let's say with robotics, so you're going to have motors, you need to turn motors, you need to turn servo motors, you need a lot of accuracy with what you're doing, you can use something like this. This is actually a motor and servo shield. So this allows you to control motors and servos much more easily. Or if let's say you have something that's gonna have a lot of sensors on it. So, uh, so again, I don't know, you want 20 or different types of sensors. They actually have a sensor shield. And so this has been specifically designed to allow you to have a lot more inputs for sensors so that you can pull all of that information in uh, from whatever whatever sensor modules that you have connected to your Arduino projects. So basically when we're talking about shields, we're talking about add-on boards for your Arduino board to give that extra functionality. So let's go over to the workbench so I can show you these a little bit uh, closer and give you a better idea of what shields can do for you. So here we have our Arduino Uno board, and here we have the three different shields that I've shown you before. So again, this is a network shield, so this gives you that RJ45 jack, allows you to connect to a TCP IP4 Ethernet network, and so again, it allows you to do things such as basically use your Arduino to pull in sensor data and then be able to display that as a web page. So these network, network shields are very cool. Again, if you're gonna be doing something such as building a robot, uh, than using something like this motor shield. So if you have a lot of different motors that have to fire off, you're going to be, need to be able to interact with them precisely. And so this motor shield gives you more motor and servo accessibility. The same is true with this, uh, this Arduino sensor shield. So this sensor shield allows you to much more easily uh, be able to read data from sensors, read data from, from multiple sensors. Now, the, what you're gonna look at is when you wanna connect these shields, uh, to the Arduino board, basically these pins here, these pins here line up with the pins on the Arduino board. So if you want to connect these two together, all you do is line them up and wiggle and jiggle and hope they go in. The one thing to be clear, when you put these in, it's not as easy. It's not as easy as a PCI slot. Um, again, if you're used to computers, you're used to these things slipping in a hell of a lot more easily. This is one of those design, weird design issues. And it really is not a joke. It can be an utter pain in the butt to get these things to go in properly. So there we go, we can slide it in. That's one thing when I talk about uh, issues where going with uh, Arduino built Arduino boards versus clone Arduino boards. One of the real issues you can have with the clone Arduino boards is that the, the pins don't align quite quite correctly. And so when you go to try to put on a shield, 
it can it can really so <laughs> be a real big pain in the butt. Uh, so again, that's that's one of the uh, the differences between going with a an official Arduino board, going with a clone board, is how everything lines up. But basically, uh, once it lines up, then you're able to just push it down, and then you just have this one big old block. Now the cool thing is, you can see you have the connectors on top, and so what you can do is you can actually add multiple uh, shields to a single Arduino board. So if we wanted to add the motor shield on top of this again we can just go slot it in hopefully it all works how it's supposed to it all again it's kind of ugly <laughs> it's kind of ugly you have to make sure the electrical connectors are right so this can go on top but what you see is that this network port is so big that you can't make it lay flat lay flush so this is one of the things that you'll have to be thinking about when you design your project you think about layering these and making sure everything connects properly but then after that if you want to keep going you can layer more and more and more pins on top and uh and you can get a big old arduino shield sandwich um, that can turn surprisingly ugly but one of the big problems that you're going to run into is although technically uh, this connects, making sure everything actually fits so that it electrically connects. So I would I would be worried about these top pins up here, uh, making sure that they actually do the electrical connection that they're supposed to, even though theoretically it slots on. And so then, basically then, then you have a mess that, that looks like this. And so this would then give you the network functionality and the motor functionality and, and the shield functionality. Again, one of the things you have to be thinking about when you're going to be layering these shields on top of each other is whether uh, the shield you have actually has these additional connectors. So again, with the motor shield and the network shield, they have they have the connectors on top but then we go to the sensor shield you see that this doesn't have any additional connectors on top so something to be thinking about is if you're going to be building an arduino device with multiple shields that you only have one shield where there's no additional connectors on top because if you had two if you had two that looked like this well then, then you're then you're kind of stuck the other thing to realize with shields is that the shields actually do use specific pins in order to do whatever it is that they're doing so with the network shield uh, it uses three or four pins uh, in order to do its communications so something to realize is as you go up in the boards that you won't be able to use those specific pins so let's say let's say pin uh, I don't know 10 through 13 is used to make this network shield work then when you're adding sensors or you're adding other things you just have to remember that you're not able to use pins 10 through 13. The other issue that you may theoretically run into the sh into the, with the shields depending on how they're designed is if if two shields use the same pins for communication, then that's also going to turn into an issue for you. Uh, in order to figure that out, all you do is you look at the documentation for the shields that you're using, and from there it's paint by numbers. So this shield uses these pins, this shield uses different pins, this shield doesn't have connectors on top, so therefore if we sandwich it all this way, we can have a device that we're using. So this is, this is basically what the shields look like and how you can actually uh, interact with the shields, put everything together. One thing to realize, again, this is an Arduino Uno board. Um, so the shields can fit on many different types of boards as long as they have the same pinout. So this is an Arduino Uno board, this is a mega board. So the mega board obviously is much bigger than the Uno board, but it has the same basic pinout. And so it has the, these, these, the, the top, the analog power and the top digital pins. So therefore this particular motor board can actually go, oh, uh, it does, I swear. It, yeah, there we go. It can go on top. And so now this mega board can be using this shield. Again, the same is true with the Leonardo board. Uh, so the Leonardo board has the exact same pinout as the Uno and the Mega. And so this particular shield will work on top. So that's one thing to be thinking about uh, when you're thinking about shields is making sure that the shield you purchase has the correct form factor for the board that you're going to be using. So generally, the standard shield size will work on Unos, will work on Leonardos, will work on Megas. But um, if you start using things like nano boards, so nano boards again are those small boards. So those nano boards have specific shields that have to be used on them. So you can, you can't purchase a nano board and put it onto a Mega or Uno. So just make sure you're dealing with the proper form factor uh, when you're dealing with these shields.
So that's a little bit of an introduction to shields for Arduino boards. Now one thing with shields, uh, just like with Arduino boards themselves, is that clones are manufactured. So this is an Ar uh, Arduino network shield actually from Arduino, and this is an Arduino network shield that is a clone. This particular one is from SaneSmart. So if you take a look at them, um, again, they both have uh, network connections, but you can see that there are some differences. Differences. Again, with all these things, deciding whether or not you go with the official version or the clone version. The clone version is gener generally going to be about half the price of the official version. So this network shield directly from Arduino, I think eh, it costs about $20, $22 or $24. Uh, whereas this Saint Smart one, I think costs around $12. Uh, so uh, the, the, the clones can be a lot more affordable. Uh, but <clears throat> I was running into some very weird issues with this particular clone. Uh, when I was trying to do a, an analog sensor and be able to read the data from the sensor. This was actually throwing off some weird issues. Um, so this is something that you're going to have to be thinking about when you're going to go out and purchase shields. Do you buy the, the shield directly from uh, Arduino that goes through quality assurance? Or do you save a couple of bucks and buy something a little bit cheaper? Um, really, it depends on what you're doing, what you're trying to fire off, how specific uh, readings and things actually have to be. Uh, if you're going to just throw something, you know, again, if you're if you're doing a project for the house, you're going to throw something outside. You just want to give it a little bit of network connectivity. Um, then you may want to go with the, the ten or twelve dollar clone board. On the other hand, again, if you're going to be doing class, if you're learning how to do this kind of stuff, I would highly recommend going with the official Arduino board because then you can guarantee there's quality assurance. Again, just, just so everybody knows, put my opinion here a little bit, quality assurance is worth something. Quality assurance is actually has financial value. So just something to think about there. So that's, uh, that's a little bit about Arduino Shields and look forward to seeing you at the next video.